As you've been able to find out on Bisons.com, this is a pretty complex project, but some elements in this project make the job easier on the guys running the machinery or even holding levels at field level. And to talk about some of those complexities, our good friend Mac joins us again here on Bisons.com. Mac, it's all about the laser, isn't it, when it comes to laying out the field and getting as close as possible to those finer details to make the drainage system work as well as it can? Yeah, that's, that's the only way to get to, get to grade what we, from what, what, what we have to be at. It's a quarter inch and 10 foot, and that, that's, that's where we get it, and we probably closer than that. So. Now, Mac, there's a couple of buzzwords out there. Laser, obviously, very fine. You can cut with the lasers. This is going to help you with the direction. Why is it better than GPS? Well, GPS, uh, when, when we purchased the dozer, GPS was within within an inch or two inches, and uh, we needed to get it closer than that, so we went with the went with the uh, <coughs> hydraulic controlled lasers. All right, now take me through. You hear, here at home plate at Coca-Cola Field, it's the center point of every Bison game, but it's also the center point of the laser that helps all your machinery out. Step by step, how does the laser here at home plate communicate with your machines out there? Well, the laser's, laser's sending out a beam, and on top of the dozer, I don't know if you can see or not, there's a, there's a receiver on top of that. I fix that up. We set that to the grade we need, which is subgrade at, at this this time, and it picks that up and holds that holds that grade. And also, the slope is dialed in in the laser itself, so that's, that's how we you know, get it within the... Is it like autopilot for a pilot if he's flying a plane when you guys are out there on the machinery? Well, you still need to know what you're doing out there. I mean, you still need to operate the blade, and you know, you, you got the, the wings on the blade. You need to make them, you know, have them level, and you know, so it's, it's not it's not just like you know, a monkey couldn't just sit in the seat and do it. So it looks like from day to day that you're just out here pushing around dirt, but there's really a method to the madness, isn't there? Right. We we basically start in left field and push the dirt towards our, you know, towards our <coughs> where we're hauling out from, and then uh, that's what we're doing right now. And the big piles of dirt that are still here at Coca-Cola Field are still elements of the original field, but by the time you guys are done, ready to put in the irrigation and then eventually lay the new sod down, which will be the new Coca-Cola field, all that will be all disappear. Correct, yeah. Uh, basically, we're down pretty much to where it was at probably in like, in like 80, 85 or 8 when they, when they built the stadium. I mean, we can, we can still tell that there's, there's some material here that, that was here from the original. How much difference will the new field be versus what was here? Well, the infield will be a lot lower than, than what it was. I'm sure when they're sitting in the dugout this year, they're going to be able to tell the difference there. But basically, all the dirt was taken out, and then the infield was lowered down to accommodate the warning track and, and, the, and the rest of the field. You could see the crown of the of the diamond as well. For guys like me, they get to walk around on the field during the given course of the season. How much of a difference when it comes to the grade, and will there be, from the naked eye, a difference in the level of the field of play? Basically, we cut two foot out of the infield. From the infield, about midway through center field. That's a pretty significant difference. Yes, that's about 5,000 yards of dirt we, we're hauling out.